So, Thanks, David. Good luck. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Thanks to the organizers for the invitations to this event. It's a pleasure to be here, and thank you to the rest of the speakers for their insightful presentations. Uh, my name is David Martinez. I'm going to speak about the most common movements preceding goals in male and female professional soccer. A bit of my background or what I'm doing at the moment. I'm a PhD student at Salford University with the topic change direction enhancement in professional soccer with the supervisor being Paul Jones and I'm lead strength and conditioning coach at Tottenham Hotspur Women. So I'm going to speak about a study regarding my, my PhD which is called the most common movements preceding goals in male and female elite professional soccer. Uh, we'll go through introductions, methods, results, conclusion, practical applications, examples, training implications and strategies. Okay, so a little bit more practical at the end. Um, so basically the researchers, myself, Mark Queen and Paul Jones, and just going straight into the introduction, uh, basically soccer activities have been widely analyzed using different devices. Uh, this is very useful for understanding the physical demands of the sports, optimizing training loads for performance, decision making during injury and rehabilitation. And also this device show players regularly alternating brief bouts of high intensity and longer periods of low intensity exercise. Uh, these devices uh, have uh, poor accuracy and reliability for non-linear or, or faster movements and therefore there's limited significance regarding subtle maneuvers taking place in goal scoring situations, okay? So which are the characteristics of movements leading to a goal? So uh, Feude, Feude Tal uh, answered this question partly. Uh, they analyzed 360 goals to the season 2007-2008 uh, with uh, or replace uh, from both live and slow motion from highlights obtained in public uh, sport programs. So they found that 83% of the goals were preceded by at least one powerful action of the scoring player or assisting player. Okay, um, the most common action was straight sprint, and they also um, saw different or they included different uh, movements as a change direction sprint, jump, and rotation. So the question would be for us, uh, how could we advance in the knowledge, okay? So other movements, a bit more detail, uh, female players, uh, are defending players uh, in the same situation as attacking players, uh, the combination of movements, and obviously my PhD is regarding change direction, so uh, this, would be, this should be a must in, in, this, in this study. The aim of the study was to get a clear understanding of the movements and combination of them that occurred before a goal in male and female professional elite soccer. And the objectives were to identify and analyze total frequency and percentage of movements, intensities, directions, actions with and without the ball, movements occurring before and after each individual movement, differences between players and genders, and chain direction actions. Okay. So in regards to the methods, uh, we collected the data from English Premier League and Women's Super League from TV highlights from uh, season 2000 and uh, from basically from last season. Okay. So 2018, 2019, and we evaluated uh, soccer assistant, defender of assistant, defender of score. Okay, then we grouped as well the, the players. So attackers, defenders, and phase one players, which were the players that were in the in that part of the of the involvement at the beginning, and phase two players. So the the how we looked at the data or how we cl classified the data, we used the, a modified version of Bloomfield movement classification. Okay, which uh, we can see here in the table on the left hand side, uh, the group of movements which were linear advancing motion with their movements, which would be walk, jog, run, sprint. Then we had lateral advancing motions uh, with shuffle and crossover, chain and angle run with cut and arc run, ball blocking activities uh, with, dive and, with dive and slide. And then uh, we had uh, movements, individual movements with turn, deceleration, skip, impact, stand still, jump, land, fall, get up. From this, we had also different direction modifiers based on the movements. Okay, so for example, in the linear passing motion, forward, forward, diagonal, and backwards, we also had intensity modifiers and uh, ball modifiers. Okay, so if basically the player had the ball or if the player didn't, didn't have the ball. Okay, um, so we analyzed, as we said, Premier League and, in, and Women's Super League. In the Premier League, or in the left, we have the Premier League, on the right, Women's Super League. Uh, we analyzed 1,072 goals in English Premier League and 336 in WSL. Some of these goals uh, were not selectable. So, for example, own goals, rebounds, penalties, indirect free kicks, direct free kicks, corners, and throw-ins. 
Um, we ended up with 769 goals for Premier League and 336 for WSL. Obviously, there's more teams in English Premier League, so obviously there's going to be more uh, goals in, in Premier League. Uh, from there, we analyze each player's involvement, as you can see in the, the four rectangles in the middle for each league, with percentage uh, and players. Just to make it clear, an involvement, as you see in, in the red square, uh, is the individual movement or sequence of movements of each player in the goal action. So, for example, if a player did a linear advancing motion, a deceleration and then a turn, that would be an involvement, okay? Uh, so if we go back to the four rectangles with the percentage, obviously scorer is going to be in all of the involvements because uh, he's the one that's going to score, but it could happen that other players were not involved in that action. So for example, if the scorer took the ball from the defender, that would automatically take out of the equation the assistant and the defender of assistant. So the analysis was done uh, through... Uh, the difference were analyzed through percentage confident intervals set at 95%, where the reliabilities through the same uh, 10 games analyzed twice in four weeks. And we obtained an uh, intercast correlation coefficient of 0 0.87. Okay. Going now into the result, you see that huge table, um, and you can see different players on the, on the top of the table assistant scorer, defender assistant, defender scorer, then the attackers defenders, phase one players, phase two players. And then on the right hand side, we see the total amount. Okay, so that would be the, the sum of the, the, the four players. And in this case, uh, the tables from English Premier League will go into the next one with WSL. Uh, but basically, we, what we saw is that linear advancing motion uh, was the most common action. Uh, this was followed by deceleration and turn with no significant difference between them, okay? Uh, then uh, changing angle run, which as we said was arc run and cut, and uh, followed by pole blocking activities, lateral advancing uh, motion with no significant difference between these. And uh, this was followed by jumps. Uh, we obviously, there were other movements as keep, impact, stand, steal, land, fall, and get up, but uh, they were in, in a very little percentage. Uh, very, very similar in WSL, as we said. The main, main difference, if we go to the sixth most common movement, which was lateral advancing motion, it actually showed that there was a, a significant, it was significantly lower than in English Premier League, okay? And we'll, we'll come back to this because it could have uh, some kind of implications, okay? Uh, so this is in general, if we go to difference between, some key difference between, between players, uh, we can see that uh, attackers significantly high, had, uh, sorry, significantly high amount of cuts uh, compared to arc runs, while defenders significantly high amount of arc runs compared to cuts, okay? The main reason for this would be that, that the cut would be performed to gain advantage in a certain situation by slightly reducing velocity, okay? So something that a, an, an attacker would obviously do in trade of uh, a change in the path, while defenders uh, would perform an arc run, but just mainly to maintain the velocity when, when changing that angle run, okay? Uh, defenders <coughs> perform significantly higher percentage of lateral advancing motion compared to attackers in both leagues, which would make sense as defenders would perform these movements to reposition them themselves between the player and the goal, while it wouldn't uh, be particularly efficient for attackers. Also, phase two players significantly higher percentage of jumps compared to phase one players, which again makes sense as habitually players would jump to hit the ball. Uh, to the goal in most locations, and the assistant is not going to jump to to make an assist. Okay. If we go now to the to the intensities, okay. So here we can see the intensities in in for each movement. So for English Premier League on the left and uh, WSL in the right. In green we have the movements at high intensity. In yellow we have the movements at medium intensity, and in low, uh, sorry, in, in orange at low intensity. Okay. So as we can see, uh, movements at high intensity. Uh, had greater percentage than medium and low intensity, okay? In all the deceleration and shuffles, which was very similar uh, to compared to medium intensity. Uh, in comparison to cut, uh, in, in relation to cut and arc run, uh, it's interesting to see that they were the ones with higher uh, or greater percentage of high intensity, okay? So you would perform a cut uh, with a very, or most of the cases with a very high intensity to be able to overpass the defender and an arc run Obviously, you're going to do it in a, in a, at a high intensity. You want to maintain the velocity. Uh, significantly greater linear advancing motion at high intensity in WSL compared to English Premier League. And we'll come to this again we, when we do a bit more comparison between leagues. 
uh, and crossover had greater percentage at high intensity compared to, to shuffle, okay? So usually a crossover uh, would be performed uh, to, to gain distance or to do it fast, in a fast, uh, as a fast movement compared to shuffle, which you wouldn't require to do it so, so fast. So you, wouldn't, you wouldn't perform it when you wanna go fast on a lateral uh, movement. In terms of uh, players' involvement, so the percentage of involvement where players perform at least one high-intensity action, um, in 83%, almost 83%, and 85% of the involvement, there was at least one high-intensity action for English Premier League and WSO. So this could be any type of movement. So a linear advancing motion at high intensity, which is a sprint, a deceleration at high intensity. Uh, interestingly, assistant uh, shows significantly lower percentage of involvement with at least one high intensity movement, which will be related to an assistant not necessarily being in a critical situation, and what would in a lot of occasions relay more in the, in the accuracy of the pass. We can see also that the defender of assistant and scorer uh, are very close to the, to the average. And then we get to the defender of scorer, which uh, almost, uh, there's almost a high intensity action in in all of the involvements, as we can see, no? So in this case, the defender score is going to be in, a, in every goal in a critical situation, as this is going to be the last player involved in the action previous to the goal. And so they are usually going to rely in high intensity action, okay? This is quite, quite important. Um, so now looking at, at differences in terms of uh, direction modifiers, so going to linear advancing motion, uh, most of the actions would be performed in a forward direction, okay? Although some, 50% uh, in Premier League and, and Women's Super League were uh, in a diagonal forward manner, which basically means that the, the body would be rotated to one of the sides. Okay, uh, going into the direction modifier or deceleration, we saw that uh, there were a higher percentage of forward deceleration uh, compared to diagonal and forward sideways and backwards. Um, also, high forward decelerations for WSL compared to English Premier League and significantly higher sideways and diagonal forward deceleration for English Premier League compared to WSL, okay? Which could be, again, related to uh, some kind of more lateral movements performing English Premier League compared to WSL, okay? So moving on into the, in the, to the turn, uh, turnings, turning activities or rotations, we can see on the left-hand side Premier League, we can see on the right-hand side WSL, okay? So in these uh, graphs or figures, we can see in black the total amounts, okay? In blue, the attackers, and in yellow, the defenders, okay? So uh, there were higher percentage of turns from zero to 60 degrees compared to turns of 60 to 120 degrees and turns of more than 120 degrees. So that would be 120 to 180, 180 to 270, and so on, okay? And then it's interesting to see that there were higher percentage of turns from 60 to 120 degrees for defenders and higher percentage of turns from zero to 60 green attackers, okay? So, I mean, this makes quite a lot of sense as well, uh, because while the defender is in most of the occasions back to goal, and so if the attacker is, uh, overpasses this, this player, this is going to have to turn with sharper degrees. In the other hand, the attacker would, in most of the occasions, be facing the goal, and so uh, this player wouldn't require such a high amount of sharp turns, okay? Okay, now looking at the um, at the ball modifier. Okay, so um, how was the ball involved? The ball involved in in these situations. So uh, movements performed most commonly with the ball were cut and turn, which is quite interesting. Uh, movements performing similar percentage with and without the ball, which were linear advancing motion, um, and movements performed most commonly without the ball, which were deceleration, arc runs, shuffle, crossovers. Obviously, you wouldn't perform a crossover or a shuffle with the ball or wouldn't be very efficient. Uh, say for, same for an arc run, which would, you would go like a semicircle. So you, it wouldn't be very, very uh, useful with doing it with the ball. Uh, for example, a, a cut would be much more useful to do it with the ball, so you can overpass a defender. Also very interesting, uh, assistant perform higher percentage of movements with the ball, and uh, scores perform higher percentage of movements without the ball. Okay, obviously assistant, it's going to have a bit more time with the ball. It's going to be able to uh, manipulate a little bit more the ball while the scorer, when he gets the ball, which is usually inside the, inside the, the box, is going to have to react really, really quick and, and he's not going to have a lot of, a lot of time with the ball in, in these different movements, okay? So uh, moving on now to movements that happen before and after uh, a movement, okay? 
Uh, so uh, just to explain, well, this this uh, table is for English Premier League, but it's very similar. WSL and English Premier League were very very similar, okay, in terms of uh, the percentage. So uh, we're just going to use this as an example, the one from English Premier League. So in the middle we have the movements, okay. So linear passing motion, deceleration, turn, cut, arc run, crossover, and shuffle. On top we have the movements that uh, we, that would be performed before that movement and on the lower part, the movements that would be performed after, okay? So uh, we I marked in orange uh, the ones that were performed most commonly for each movement before and after. So we start in the in the right-hand side for crossover and shuffle. We can see the mo that the most common movements before a crossover and a shuffle are deceleration and turn, okay? And the most common movements uh, after a crossover and a shuffle are a deceleration. Uh, also, uh, in terms of cut and arc run, linear advancing motion, the most common movement before, and again, linear advancing motion, the most common movement after, okay? Uh, in, in more percentage in the case of cuts. Now, if we look at uh, linear advancing motion, deceleration, and turn, which we'll look in the, to it in the next slide, we see that there's actually a linear, uh, sorry, a, a common cycle of movements, okay? So uh, before a, a deceleration, there's gonna be a turn, and after there's going to be a deceleration. Before the, decel uh, the deceleration, there's going to be a linear advancing motion uh, followed by a turn. And in before a, a turn, there's going to be a deceleration, and after a linear advancing motion, as I say, in most of the, case, the cases, not in all, okay? But what uh, I want to show you is, is, is this graph on the, on, on the right, okay? So basically, you see the, the common link of movements one after the other, uh, and it makes sense that if a player is advancing in a forward direction, if she or he suddenly wants to change the initial direction, this player is going to have to first decelerate and then turn and then accelerate into the new direction. Okay. So moving into the moving into the next one. Um, so basically, more related to the chain direction and uh, chain direction actions uh, and related or comparing them to uh, linear activities and taking into account that chain direction actions uh, were. Um, where when either there was a deceleration, a turn, a cut, an arc run, or any combination of this, we see that in 81%, around 81% of all the involvements, there was a change of direction action. And uh, at high intensity, uh, we see that around 60%, okay, in English Premier League and, and Women's Super League. Okay, if we look now at linear advancing motion actions, uh, we see that in 78% and in 82%, uh, of the action, there was a linear advancing motion, and when we only looked at this in terms of sprints, uh, this dropped to 54% and 62%. Okay, and actually, also important to say that there was a significant significant difference uh, between English Premier League and, and WSL. So for so higher intensities and, and more uh, linear advancing motions in more involvements uh, for WSL. Okay, so uh, in terms of conclusions of, of this part. Um, Linear advancing motion was the most common action prior to a goal, followed by deceleration and turn. These three movements combined one after the other was the most common link of movements and tend to be performed on a certain cycle, okay? Due to its high frequency, effectively performing these three movements could make a difference in games. Uh, movements considered to be chain direction actions show to be as frequent in goal movements as linear advancing motion, highlighting the importance of this type of activities. Also, uh, players uh, followed a similar trend but had individual characteristics. Uh, specific training strategies could be implemented uh, depending on the manner that each player is usually involved in these actions. Uh, WSL and English Premier League show the same trends, although, um, although WSL perform linear advancing motions in more involvements and at all, intensi at all intensities and at high intensities, okay? so while English Premier League perform greater percentage of lateral movements compared to WSL which would suggest, and, and obviously there's, there's a lot more uh, research to be done, but we would suggest that um, there's a possible tendency for a more direct style of play in WSL and maybe more combinative uh, for, for English Premier League, okay? Uh, and finally, in terms of conclusions, although low intensity activities are of higher frequency through the game, high intensity activities are predominant in goal scoring situations. And so players would benefit from being faster and more explosive. In terms of practical applications, uh, accelerations uh, and speed drills should be a priority in training strategies, both with and without the ball. 
deceleration reels, eccentric overload, plyometric exercise in multiple planes would be recommended. Explosive training development with and without the ball should also be a priority in training strategies. Obviously, there's going to be a, a gap between theory and practice. Okay, so the high amount of factors apart from the specific explosive movement abilities of the players are quite uh, wide. Okay, so we have, for example, the body position, the position related to the goal, other players' position, previous movement, speed of the previous movement, being the uh, proactive player, so the, for example, the attacker or uh, versus being the defender, uh, the level of fatigue, the technique, the experience, the psychological factors. So there's going to be a lot of factors that, is going to, that are going to influence uh, these uh, specific actions, okay? Obviously, it's, a play, uh, it's very important for a player to be able to play with space and time. Okay, so now going into, into the examples, into some examples. Um, in the, uh, we, we're going to focus mainly on, on uh, deceleration and turns, uh, but uh, I also wanted to touch uh, base with CAD and our grants because we obviously saw that uh, they had a, a, a good frequency of, of actions in, in goals as well, or uh, they were in a high percentage in, or in a modest 10% percent, percent around 10% in the, in the total percentage, basically. So uh, if we look at this action, this, in this case is uh, Chloe Kelly from Everton. Uh, she's going to perform an, a cut in this situation, okay? And the defender is going to perform an arc run, okay? So she gains advantage from that cut, and gets a bit of space, shoots, and it's actually a very good goal. Um, in terms of, uh, we know that obviously faster sprint makes the difference, but what about the previous turn? Okay, so um, in this case, uh, we see this action, okay, which is one of our players, Lucy Queen. She turns now in that position, the Coventry player, uh, and we'll put this again. Okay, he's going to have to perform a, a 120, 180 degree turn. And if she's, if she's able to do it effectively and effi or efficiently, she's going to, uh, she's going to get uh, there. If, if she's uh, slow doing that turn and, and she's not very fast, obviously she's, she's not going to get there. So in this case, in the first part, she gets there and our play has to decelerate. Coventry play decelerates uh, as well. And they go into uh, the next action, okay, which is very similar, a turn from both of the players and a sprint, okay? So in this case, she doesn't get to the ball, but look at this, like, um, probably like one tenth of a second later. So my question is: obviously, we know that or we know that uh, improving acceleration and speed uh, is complicated. We try to, but what about turnings? Okay, so could she be in a better position to stop that cross if she was able to uh, to basically uh, turn faster? Well, that's my question. Okay, in this case, uh, our player is able to cross and shoot and go, uh, sorry head and goal. Okay, in this case, uh, this uh, game that we play against Arsenal. So at this point, uh, both players are in a similar position. Obviously, there's a lot of players around, but it looks like a 1v1 situation. And both of them are going to turn, as you just saw, and they're going to gonna perform a sprint or an acceleration, okay? Uh, so if we go into this, again, if she, if she had uh, gotten there a bit uh, um, sooner, could she be, or if she was able to turn a bit faster, uh, apart from the, obviously, the acceleration, would she be in a better position to block that ball? Possibly, okay? So uh, in this situation, the same game, she's actually able to uh, turn quite fast due to the, uh, and her situation was not very advantageous because she was running backwards and the uh, Arsenal player was running forward, but she is able to turn quite fast and uh, the Arsenal player is not able to, to go into a good position to shoot and has to pass the ball. Um, going into more explosive, uh, or in terms of deceleration, more explosive type actions, uh, in this case, it's not going to be a goal, okay? But I think it explains quite well uh, the amount of space that you can gain by deserving quite quick, okay? So in this case, it's Keith Graham, uh, one of our players, uh, and it's the same game, okay, against Arsenal. Now she's going to decelerate, and she's going to gain a lot of space just by decelerating faster than, than the Arsenal players, okay? So as you can see, she gains a lot of space there, able to shoot and almost score, okay? So just to put it again, decelerates quickly and shoots. Okay, so uh, again, uh, there's going to be a lot, a lot of uh, factors influencing, not just, okay, this player decelerated faster than the other one. There's a lot of factors influencing this, okay? Now we're going to see uh, an action from Beth Mead from Arsenal. Okay, so she's able to decelerate really quickly uh, compared to the uh, player from Reading. The player from Reading uh, takes quite a lot of time to decelerate, so 
the player from Arsenal getting into a really, really good position to be able to score, okay? So we're going to see this one again on a slow motion. Okay, so she actually decelerates, lat oh, sorry. Let's go back to this one. So she actually decelerates uh, sideways. Okay, so look at the angles that she gets into. And the um, player in black uh, takes a lot of time to decelerate and she's able to get a lot of space, okay? Uh, last one of, of for decelerations. Uh, in this case, it's a game that we play against Manchester City. So if you see the striker and you see the central defender, they're both running into the goal, but suddenly they see that the ball is going to, it's not going forward, it's going back, or it's going towards the back. So basically now they need to decelerate as quick as they can and uh, turn and obviously uh, perform a linear, linear action, okay? So in this case, decelerate. Uh, the Man City player actually is now in a slightly better position because there's, she has a lot more time to get into the football because she's a bit further away. In this situation, our player is going to have to uh, run towards the player and the player is going to run to the opposite position. So obviously our player is going to have to decelerate, turn, and try to get there, okay? In this case, she doesn't, she doesn't get there, but again, could she get into a better position to stop uh, that cross if she was able to decelerate faster, if she was able to uh, turn faster? So I think it, it does make a difference, okay? It does make a difference if we're able to train these kind of things or these kind of movements, okay? So uh, these are some examples of um, deceleration strategies. Uh, this is one performing the gym. So in the left-hand side, we have Jesnas. Uh, who's performing a, a exercise in the in the inertial device? Uh, we try to work a lot on on eccentric overload, which obviously is very related to the ability to decelerate. Also, in a rate of eccentric force development, which I, I think is key. So the the time that it, it takes you to um, absorb the forces, uh, and we see in this, uh, for example, she's doing a, a squat. She's helping herself on the way up uh, with the with the bar. Okay, it looks like she's smiling, but she's actually not. She's actually uh, having a bit of pain. Uh, and the reason, main reason is that it's very, very hard. Okay, It's very, very hard to perform this, this type of exercises. Uh, there's loads and loads and loads of exercises that you can perform in this type of machines uh, with different angles, with different uh, objectives. And we're going to look now at uh, this one on the right. So this one is Lucia Leon. Um, and first look at the angle that uh, our players get into. So in this case, Gemma Edison in the middle is decelerating. Uh, and the angle that she gets into are quite illustrative, okay? So you can see quite quite easily there. And what we try to do is, is to get into those angles to be able to absorb the forces on those kind of actions, okay? So here's Lucia de Leon. I know the best cameras, but you can see more or less the what we're trying to achieve here, okay? So this type of angles. So going to the next one, uh, also, uh, strategies uh, combina combinating a little bit the deceleration and, and the turn. In this case, it's Gemma Davison. She's going to perform a, a turn plus, um, and then she's going to turn on the way back, and she's going to decelerate, okay, uh, with a single, single limb. So she turns, and on the way back, decelerates with one, one foot or one limb. Okay, she does actually quite well. So, yes, we're basically working on, on those turning abilities, being able to turn as fast as you can and being able to absorb the forces, okay? Uh, obviously, we will try to go from less to more complex uh, and from less to more specific, okay? So in this case, it's Rihanna Dean, one, another of our players. Uh, she's gonna be performing a crossover movement. Uh, then she's gonna have a slam with the ball and then she's gonna have to disarray really quickly and turn at the same time, alternating both sides, okay? So in this case, she has to, as you say, crossover, disarray while turning, okay, with a bungee, making it a little bit more difficult, making sure that uh, we try to also add fluctuations and perturbations on those kind of uh, movements, okay? And just to finish off, um, final thoughts. Players need to be as explosive, fast, powerful in the widest range of movement, movements possible. If a player is slow, it doesn't matter how many times he, he can repeat that slow action during the game or specifically in these uh, goal scoring situations. Uh, and yeah, thank you very much. And if you have any questions, I'll be happy to to answer. Thanks, David. Really appreciate your time. And it was um, yeah, really good insight and stuff like that. Did you, you know, for the actual study that you did, did you just take all the films of the videos and then do it that way, or did you have a system that you were using? Sorry, I yeah, think so, 
so in English, in, in Premier League, it, it was quite easier. It was very easy because uh, there's websites uh, that you can access to and they will have all the highlights in different, with different views, with different uh, speeds, okay? So that was quite easy. Uh, it was a bit more difficult in WSL. So I had to go to a program uh, that they usually uh, do in BBC, a uh, women's uh, football show. I don't really exactly remember the name. Sometimes I could find the, the videos as well in, in, in YouTube. Uh, but yeah, it was a little bit more more difficult this year. Uh, so you can see that most of the videos are from this year, no? Because uh, at this moment, uh, it's very difficult to find any any uh, replays from from WSL from from last season. But actually, from this season, you can actually uh, see all of the all of the highlights of the games.